Good morning, my name is Rachel Lee. My name is Jane Sutaria. And my name is Chelsea Wang. And we will be presenting on synthesizing and characterizing novel gelatin and pleuronic F127 hybrid hydrogels as a barrier membrane for guided bone regeneration following periodontitis. Periodontitis remains a highly critical dental health issue today, affecting 46% of adults in the United States. Periodontitis occurs when the gum becomes infected due to dental plaque organisms and can lead to irreparable loss of the supporting alveolar bone if left untreated. If measures are not taken to prevent permanent bone loss resulting from periodontitis, patients are often forced to get either dental implants or osteoinduction procedures, both of which are highly painful and invasive. Thus, we look to guided bone regeneration, or GBR, which is a common preventative measure in which a barrier membrane is placed between the gum and alveolar bone. That prevents the infected gingival fibroblasts from invading into the bone, allowing for native osteoblast bone regeneration. However, current GBR barrier membranes have a variety of shortcomings, most notably poor mechanical strength, high cost, and non-biodegradability. We investigated hydrogels as an improved GBR barrier membrane biomaterial. Hydrogels are porous and flexible three-dimensional polymer networks that retain extensive amounts of water. They mimic natural tissue, and many of their properties are engineerable, making them ideal for many applications. We use gelatin and F127, two low-cost, FDA-approved, and biocompatible hydrogels. Gelatin is a collagen-derived polymer, which exists as an unstable gel below its critical gelation temperature. Microbial transglutaminase is a crosslinker enzyme, which binds the amino residues to form a mesh network. F127 is a synthetic tri-block copolymer that is composed of hydrophilic polyethylene oxide, or PEO, and hydrophobic polypropylene oxide, or PPO blocks. F127 forms micelles above its critical micellization concentration and temperature. Furthermore, according to Lenson et al., F127 is inherently non-cell adhesive. In 2013, Botnagar et al. incorporated gelatin monostrands into the F127 micellar gel creating an F127 dominant hybrid hydrogel with increased mechanical strength and tunability of mechanical properties. However, F127 based hydrogels have been shown to dissolve rapidly in physiological solutions. Therefore, to combat this shortcoming, we decided to explore the opposite combination, introducing F127 micelles into a cross-linked gelatin mesh network base, creating a gelatin dominant hybrid hydrogel. We propose that the synthesis of these gelatin F127 hybrid hydrogels will result in increased mechanical strength, greater stability, and tunability of properties. We hypothesize that the addition of F127 will result in the reinforcement of the gelatin mesh network. Additionally, we propose that these hybrid hydrogels can be engineered to possess tunable cell attachment and exhibit both hydrophilic and hydrophobic properties. Structurally, we first wanted to investigate whether F127 will remain in its micelle form inside the network, as shown in our micelle hypothesis, or if it would be in its monostrand form, as shown in our monostrand hypothesis. Additionally, we wanted to investigate whether F127 would be physically bound to the gelatin or remain unbound. We had three main objectives in our research, primarily to synthesize our gelatin F127 hybrid hydrogels with improved mechanical strength. We also wanted to characterize the interactions between the gelatin and F127, and finally, evaluate the use of our gel, gels as a potential barrier membrane for guided bone regeneration through an in vitro experimentation. We did this by first mixing gelatin and F127 at room temperature. However, we observed the formation of a non-homogeneous mixture due to phase separation. We deduced that this was a result of the opposite gelation behaviors of gelatin and F127, and therefore had to develop a novel procedure to combat this. Gelatin and F127 were therefore mixed at 65 degrees, where gelatin was above its critical gelation temperature. F127 was also kept below its critical gelation concentration. The mixture was then cooled to 37 degrees, the crosslinker enzyme added, and the, and the gel solution incubated for 12 hours for gelation. We then characterized our gels by performing rheology. We measured the elastic modulus at 37 degrees. We then also performed a washing test in which our gels were exposed to DI water in order to investigate the bonding. In order to determine F127 micelle formation, we performed differential scanning calorimetry. Next, in order to analyze gelatin and F127 bond type, we performed Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. Finally, in order to determine F127 physical crosslinking, we performed rheology at 5 and 50 degrees Celsius. 
Next, in order to evaluate the stability of our gels under physiological conditions, we exposed our gels to Dolbeco's modified Eagle medium and phosphate buffered saline. Next, for cell plating, we first synthesized sterile gelatin control and hybrid gels. Next, we swelled our gels with DMEM for either zero, four, or seven days before plating them with human dermal fibroblasts. We cultured the, we cultured the cells for four days, then performed confocal microscopy. Figure 5 shows elastic modulus as a function of F127 concentration. The addition of F127 to our hybrid gels greatly increases the elastic modulus. The 20% F127 hybrid gel exhibits an elastic modulus five times that of pure gelatin. This demonstrates that we were able to successfully synthesize a gelatin F127 hybrid hydrogel with increased mechanical strength. Additionally, we found that as F127 concentration increases, the elastic modulus also increases, indicating tunability because we can change the F127 concentration to obtain different elastic moduli. Similarly, we also investigated the effect of gelatin concentration on our gel properties. We see that the 15% gelatin hybrid has a significantly higher elastic modulus than our 7.5% gelatin hybrid, indicating that gelatin can be used to adjust gel properties. Additionally, we see that our 15% gelatin hybrid can withstand nine times more shear stress than our 7.5% gelatin hybrid, which is critical as chewing motions generate large amounts of shear. Therefore, we show that 15% gelatin and 20% F127 are the most optimal gel concentrations. Concentrations above these resulted in phase separation. We further elucidated gelatin F127 interactions through our washing tests. The elastic modulus remained the same before and after washing. This strongly supports our physical bonding hypothesis as F127 remains entrapped within the gelatin mesh pores. If F127 was not physically bonded, it would diffuse out and therefore cause a decrease in elastic modulus. Differential scanning calorimetry reveals that the hybrid gels lack the endothermic peak characteristic of micellization. This confirms that the F127 does not form micelles. Instead, we can conclude that the F127 exists as monostrands within our gel network. Additionally, FTIR analysis further supports the presence of physical bonding between these F127 monostrands and the gelatin mesh network. We use the rubber elasticity theory to calculate gel mesh size from the elastic modulus. Mesh sizes are demonstrated in table one, and an increased elastic modulus of our hybrid gels corresponds to a decreased mesh size. This strongly demonstrates that the F127 is tightening the gelatin mesh network. Previous literature has established that at 50 degrees Celsius, the F127 forms physical crosslinks due to the entanglement of the hydrophobic PPO blocks. However, at 5 degrees Celsius, this is absent. In figure 12, we see that our hybrid gels have a higher elastic modulus at 50 degrees than at 5. We can attribute this increase in elastic modulus to the formation of these F127 physical crosslinks that strengthen the gel. From the data we collected, we were able to develop the following model of gelatin F127 structural interactions. First, we propose a packing effect in which the F127 monostrands fill the gelatin mesh pores to allow the gel network to resist deformation. Second, our data supports the presence of physical bonding. Represented in region one, the hydrophilic F127 PEO blocks bind to the gelatin to reinforce the mesh, reinforce the mesh network. In region two, the hydrophobic F127 PPO blocks entangle to form physical crosslinks that also strengthen the gel. Finally, due to the presence of an interpenetrating F127 subnetwork within our gelatin mesh pores, we see the formation of both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. In figure 14, we can see that our gels exposed to PBS and DMEM have the same elastic modulus as our gels exposed to DI water, indicating the stability of our gels under physiological conditions. Additionally, we see that the pink media has diffused through our hybrid gel, indicating that our gels are able to facilitate nutrient diffusion. Our top row of cell images show our hybrid gels, while the bottom row shows gelatin control gels after zero, four, and seven days of swelling. We see significantly reduced cell numbers on our hybrid gels, with cell numbers decreasing nearly 50% after seven days of swelling, satisfying our criteria for a viable GBR barrier membrane. Additionally, we see cell numbers decrease from zero to seven days of swelling, indicating that swelling time may be used as a factor to control the degree of cell attachment. 
we believe that these regions of no cell attachment are due to the non-cell adherent PEO that adsorbs to the gelatin mesh network during the swelling period. A 3D reconstruction of our confocal microscopy data demonstrates that our gels are impermeable to cells. This further demonstrates viability as a potential GVR barrier membrane. We successfully synthesized and characterized gelatin F127 hybrid hydrogels that overcome many limitations of current GVR barrier membrane materials. Our hybrid hydrogels display an increased mechanical strength five times that of pure gelatin. Additionally, they display porosity to bioactive materials, cell impermeability, and reduced cell attachment, criteria that ca characterize viable GBR barrier membranes. Finally, our data supports our proposed model of an interpenetrating F127 subnetwork within our gelatin mesh pores. The use of our gelatin F127 hybrid hydrogels as a barrier membrane to treat periodontitis is just the starting point. With our understanding of the polymer interactions occurring within our gel, we can further optimize our gel and pave the way for an abundance of future medical applications. In the future, we would like to perform additional characterization tests, such as cryo-SEM and small angle x-ray scattering, in order to further investigate bonding interactions and confirm our gel structure. Additionally, we would like to conduct more cell proliferation tests and ultimately perform an in vivo clinical evaluation of our gel as a GBR barrier membrane on a periodontitis animal model. We would like to thank our mentors and teachers for all their help and support throughout the research process. We would also like to thank George Washington University, the Siemens Foundation, and Discovery Education. Thank you all for listening to our presentation.